Hey everybody, Jeff Miller here from Target Test Prep. Happy to talk about some tips that you can follow leading up to your exam, also for test day, that's gonna help you get the score you need. Tip number one, in the days leading up to your test, prioritize your well-being. Now, this might be obvious. Hopefully you prioritize your well-being all the time, so this isn't something new for you, but you want to be in the right place physically and mentally. Now, with that said, you don't want to get to a couple days before your test and all of a sudden change your eating habits, change your sleeping habits, change your routine physically. You don't want to do any of that. So hopefully the things that you're doing fall in line with what you're doing anyway. Eating well, getting proper sleep, and then dealing with some sort of physical routine. Maybe you walk your dog every day. Maybe you go running. Maybe you go to the gym. Maybe you do yoga. Do all of those things leading up to the day of your test so you are literally in the peak shape you need to be mentally and physically and ready to go in and dominate the GMAT. Tip number two, do not cram leading into your test. And there's a lot of different ways cramming can take place. So for example, three days before your exam, don't try to learn new stuff. Your brain might be saying, hey, I got to learn as much as I possibly can. But look, at that point, you know what you know. Don't go down to a rabbit hole doing a bunch of like super hard challenging questions. Just firm up the stuff you already know. That's huge. Don't take a practice test a day or two before your exam. Yeah, you might want to try to sneak one in to deal with timing and feel great about test day. But again, it takes a mental toll to take a practice exam. Don't do it just 48 hours or less before your real GMAT. And then finally, on the final day, don't try to cram again. Don't try to do heavy studying. Sure, you can do some light studying, some light prep. That's fine. Look over notes, look over flashcards, but try to do things that are taking your mind off the test the following day. Don't cram, because again, this goes back to what I said earlier. You want to be mentally fresh and ready to go on test day. Cramming, learning new stuff, taking practice tests will eliminate that. So try to play it cool. Don't cram leading into test day. Tip number three, mentally prepare yourself for what's going to happen on the day of your test. If you're just taking the GMAT for your first time, then you might not know. But first and foremost, visualize your success. Visualize getting that average rate question and you knocking it out of the park. And then also be prepared for ups and downs on test day. I talk about this all the time. Things aren't gonna go in a straight line on test day. You're gonna have good moments followed by bad moments. Key for you is, can you absorb those bad moments and understand that those bad moments are just a moment in time and that you can move on from them and still be very successful on your test? That means if you get to a question that you know you should get right, and for whatever reason, the correct answer choice just isn't there for you, no worries. Take a guess, mark it for review, you can come back. Even if you can, that shouldn't be the thing that completely crushes your score unless you react super negatively to it. So the point is, visualize your success, make sure you're prepared for how test day is going to go with the ups and downs, and that's going to put you in an even better spot when you walk into that test center. Number four, do some warm-up before your test. You have a test at 12.30, maybe you get to the test center a little early, you're either sitting in your car or if you took public transportation, you know, you're at a cafe near the test center, you're looking through some note cards to warm up your brain, you're doing some small, short, easy practice questions to warm up your brain, so that when you get to the test center and finally sit in that seat, or if you're taking the test online, you can obviously do the same stuff, but that means your brain is where it needs to be. You didn't do over strenuous stuff, but you did just enough so that you're fresh, you're warmed up, and you're ready to attack that test. Tip number five, especially if you are taking the test at a test center, check your equipment and don't be afraid to ask for different or more writing utensils if you need it or notepads. This is what I mean. Initially, you're going to be given that dry erase notebook. You're going to be given a marker, maybe two. Test out the marker. Do some, not just scribble, write out a few sentences or a few math equations, whatever. Make sure they're working properly. Now, when you're in the moment of the test, if you say in the math section, for example, you get through all of those pages and you need more room to write. Don't go seeking out small corners of that notepad to continue to do your work. Rather, be strategic as you're finishing up a question. Raise your hand. Make sure the proctor sees you. Have your notebook out. They'll pass you a new notebook, and none will be the wiser. You can keep going. Finish the exam where you have proper notepads and things to go. If you're at home, obviously, you know what your equipment is, your whiteboard, your marker, and you'll be certain, certainly 
understanding or prepared to know that it's working properly. If it's not, obviously you go to the store, buy a new one prior to test day. But yes, having the equipment working properly is very important. So make sure that all is checked out before you start your exam. Tip number six, stick to your timing strategy. Look, test day is not the time to experiment. Please do not do that. If you've done all I always ask you to do leading into test day, that means you've taken all these NBA.com practice exams, you've developed a timing strategy, and you need to execute on that strategy on test day. You need to trust that what you've been doing up to that point has been successful for you. So when you get to the test, know that you can't get hung up on a question for 10 minutes, right? Know how you can determine how many questions you should have left at a certain period of the clock. All of those things that hopefully you've been doing during your practice exams, you're gonna do and execute on test day. Number seven, do not try to guess how you're doing. That is killer on the GMAT. You have enough things to worry about, right? Don't try to guess how you're doing because you might be doing great and you might think you're doing bad because you're seeing hard questions. You don't wanna put yourself in that position because the moment that you think mentally that things are going south, they will go south and you will not recover. So if you see a question that seems easy, that's okay, maybe it's experimental. You don't know why you're getting that easy question. Maybe it's just because you're good at the GMAT. Or if you feel like you're getting beaten up, well, that's probably because you're doing really well. Either way, you go hard to the end of the exam. You don't let what happened in a section prior affect you on a subsequent section, none of that. You take one question at a time and you can control what you can control. What you can control is the question in front of you. You do everything you need to do to get that question right you move on to the next one, rinse and repeat throughout the entire exam, and then see how you do. At the end of the day, you're probably gonna get your goal score and this will all be a distant memory. And if not, you can just retake the GMAT. So don't try to guess how you're doing on the exam. My final tip, be confident. Confidence is so important on the GMAT. I can't even describe how important because think about it. Going into test day, you've studied hard. You've worked for months. You've stopped doing social activities so you could study hard for the GMAT, and you've made it a priority amongst other things that you have going on. So you deserve this, but you can't go into tests and lack confidence. If you're getting what you need on practice test scores, it means you're great at the GMAT, and that should translate to test day. So you walk in there, no matter what happens during the test, you keep up a high level of confidence, you see the test to the end, and I'm telling you, if you can do all this, you have a great shot at hitting your score on test day. All right, I had a blast talking about some tips you can follow leading up to your test as well as on test day. I know there's been plenty of videos on the best ways to prepare, but hopefully you can also follow these tips on how to attack your GMAT, how to attack the week leading up to your GMAT. And look, if you enjoyed today's video, please leave comments in our channel for more videos you wanna see. Subscribe to our channel, and I'm looking forward to doing more videos in the future. Thank you for watching, everybody, and we'll talk soon.